Pastor Chuck, if my writing is poor, it is because I'm 98 years old. And I have a request for you that I think only you can answer. Because I grew up in the Christian church where the Lord's Supper is observed every Sunday, my grandson, David Emerson, a member of your congregation, brings me to your Wednesday nights as often as he can. That's for the communion service. And one such night, several months ago, we were all at the service, which was very beautiful, and I am in a wheelchair, so we always wait until the aisles are mostly cleared before they wheel me out. On this particular evening, Dave had an errand he had to take care of, and so his wife, Barbara, went to pick up the eight-year-old Nathan at the Children's Center. So I was left sitting alone in the aisle. The crowd was passing me by. I probably looked tired and sad as it was well past my seven o'clock bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> then a sweet little lady dressed in gray stopped. She picked up my hand and held it while she smiled at me. Then she placed my hand back in my lap and went on her way. She didn't say a word but what a change she made in my life. I felt deeply loved, surrounded by love. It was as if God himself had come down from heaven and put his arms around me. Every time I remember that moment, I get the same feeling of being surrounded by love. I would like to thank that sweet little lady in gray, but I don't know how. I've never seen her again, and I don't know her name, but I think if you could tell your congregation, how much your gift means to me, she may realize how much her gift of love means. I've written a lot, and I hope you can read it. Thank you for the help and pleasure you have given me when I am able to attend your services. And thank you for passing on my thanks to my sweet little lady in gray. God bless you in your work. So that sweet little lady in gray, <laughs> wherever you are tonight, know that your gesture of love was very deep and very meaningful. And I think that, you know, one of the real hallmarks of the Jesus movement was the openness in expressing love. And I think that we have sort of lost something in the size and the busyness that we've become engaged in, that we don't take time to just stop and smile, hold somebody's hand, just say, glad to see you here, or like the little lady in gray, you don't have to say anything at all. It just ministers to someone when we show love to each other. And may the Lord help us to be a loving congregation. I think that one of the persons who probably um, did almost more for Calvary Chapel during the Jesus Movement was a sweet little girl. I don't even know her name. She sort of blew her mind on acid, but she had the sweetest smile and the prettiest face. And she would stand at the entrance of the church, and as people would come in, she would just smile and say, God bless you, I love you, and often just go up and hug people. And we had a fellow who was a professor of psychology at the University of Irvine. He was actually a psychiatrist himself, very cynical, avowed agnostic, and his wife and his daughter kept after him to come to church. One Sunday he did, and this little girl was there at the front, smiled at him, went up and hugged him and said, I love you and Jesus loves you. It broke him down. <laughs> living for the Lord today because that little girl showed him the love of Jesus. You know, really, that's 
the task for all of us to show the love of Jesus to the world around us, how desperately the world needs to know and to see practical demonstrations of the love of Jesus. The other letter I have is of a more serious sort. It is from our pastor in Subotica, Yugoslavia, Luban. As you know, <laughs> and later on he says, my English is not very good, so I'll read it as he wrote it, and, uh, and you'll understand <laughs> that his English isn't that good. And you know we've been airstrike with four powerful missiles. That night I visit some people from church, Emir, he just come that night from the army, and as we all run under the strongest wall support in the building, Emery and his wife grab the kids from the bedroom and start to run to find some shelter. Next day, we note that missiles hit the street, not really far from us. 17 civilian houses are hit by the missiles. Two houses were totally destroyed. Also, seven old people are in the hospital. Subotica is little, not a military city. It's placed just 12 kilometers from the Hungarian border, and lots of Hungarians, Serbs, Croat, Albanians, Slovak, Egyptians, Romanians live in Subotica. Their life in peace for many years. They never ever we have any problems about different nations. People in Subotica don't like to war. They like to work, build, sing, eat. They don't like any weapon but go out and work on their fields. They feed all of the country with the rich fields they are working really hard. If you hear reports from this people that lost their home in the last airstrike, you will not believe your ears. One old man comment, no problem. If you give me some bricks, I will build again. He's 75 years old. It takes him 20 years to build that little bomb, that little home that the bomb destroyed in two seconds. NATO can really be proud, but this people still don't hate NATO or anybody else. They just comment, thanks God, we still alive so we can build back everything that is destroyed. Next door, people, different nationalities are coming to help those that are lost their homes. People in Subotica are far from perfect, don't get me wrong, but I myself learning from, uh, from audited of those people, I don't know what that is, we also have one family from Fellowship really close to street that was striked by NATO. No electricity, water, or phone on that street. I don't want to speak about politic in Yugoslavia or about what is really going on, but please don't believe everything you see on CNN or BBS or CBS. We don't believe what we see on any of the news because Belgrade is lying, CNN is lying, and all of the media is led by the devil. <laughs> I heard a comment the other night, and I thought there's surely a lot of truth to that. One of the fellows, uh, I think it was on uh, Larry King, he said, the first casualty in war always is truth. Just remember that. It's always the first casualty in war. Uh, Kosovo, Serbia, let's see. Uh, innocent people are suffering in Kosovo, Serbia, while American and Yugoslavian presidents are playing war games. America, Albania, Yugoslavia, and the rest of the world is suffering because of ungodly leadership, presidents without the fear of God. But God is using this all situation to bring us closer to him. It is great to see the church growing in a situation like this. More than ever before in the last 10 years, we are like a family. We are praying, worshiping, listening to God's word. But please pray for us. It's really hard to witness on the streets, not only because the people's hearts are go going colder for God, but also because we are confused and in fear. We know that perfect love casting out every fear, but still it is not easy to witness for us. I was thinking that it's going to be easy, but it's really hard. 
We are not heroes and strong people in faith, in faith <laughs> but we want to be used by God in these times. Also, our hope and prayer is to help those in the church that lost their jobs because really bad economic situation in Yugoslavia, and also to help those that lost their homes in the last airstrike. Pray for the refugee ministry we are thinking about to start. Lots of Serbs and Albanians running from Kosovo. If fear from NATO airstrikes come to Subotica, then they will be sent to go to Hungary as refugees. We are praying to visit those people and give them Bibles and help. Pray for dear numbers of Calvary Fellowship that has to go to the army in Yugoslavia army. It's not an option. We just have to. We don't. If we don't go, we go to prison for five to 20 years. Please pray for me that God give me wisdom and love, more love than I have, more hunger for God and his will. I need new vision from Jesus, refreshing spirit in me. Thanks for all your prayers and support. God is answering on your prayers and keeping us safe in his arms. Uh, he is really good to us and merciful. From Calvary Chapel, Yugoslavia, Luban. And then he says, sorry, my English is really bad. But uh, let's pray for them right now. Father, we bring Luban to you and our fellowship there in Subotica, all of these beautiful young people that you have gathered together and you've begun a beautiful work in their lives. And Lord, here they are caught in a situation. They're sort of pawns in this giant chess game. And we ask, Lord, that you will be with them, that you will protect them. And Lord, we pray that you will just help them as they do seek to witness to others in this time of tragedy. Lord, we pray for the anointing and the power of your Holy Spirit to rest upon their lives. And Lord, we ask your blessing upon Luban as he leads this group of people. We thank you, Lord, for the work that has been done there, the work that you are doing. And Lord, just continue ministering to them in this time of tragedy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, on behalf of The Word for Today, the broadcast ministry of Pastor Chuck Smith, we thank you for joining us in today's broadcast. For more of Pastor Chuck's studies and biblical teaching resources, visit our website at pastorchuck.org. You can contact The Word for Today at The Word for Today, P.O. Box 890-820, Temecula, California, 92589 or email us at infopastorchuck at gmail.com. We'll return with more of our verse-by-verse -verse Bible.